Hi friends, uh, I was thinking I'd do a little show and tell for y'all today. Uh, so if you aren't familiar, Ras uh, not Raspberry Pi, Adafruit has a, uh, a special project for the Raspberry Pi. I think they've had it since the very first Raspberry Pi called uh, the Pi Video Looper. All it does is use a simple Python script and FFmpeg, I believe, uh, to just loop videos as provided from a USB drive. So you just load this USB drive up with MP4s, plug it in here, and, and you can kind of determine the order based on the file names, and it'll just keep playing through it. Uh, so what I've done here is I have a, a pretty simple case here, which is actually from Adafruit, um, and a Pi TFT shield. This is the 2.4 inch uh, resistive test Green one, even though I don't really use the resistive touchscreen in this case, um, and an OG um, Raspberry Pi Model A. So it's not very powerful, but it doesn't really need to be. And honestly, we're more focused on, I, I guess, energy and so on. Okay, there you go. The screen is initialized. So what I'm doing here, um, there's actually uh, an image out there that's provided that already has the Pi Video Looper completely set up. All you have to do is use uh, Etcher, the Bellina Etcher or something like that to write it to your SD card and put it on and it's running. So this is using Diet Pi, and, and I'll link that in the description. Uh, this is using Diet Pi, which is uh, very similar to Raspbian or Raspbian Lite, but it's just, uh, I guess, even lighter. I don't know. I didn't really look into the details. Um, and then all I did was uh, I installed the Pi TFT. And there you go, it's starting up. It's detected the media files. The text is all funky because it's expecting more like a 720p, 1080p screen, whatever. Um, so I set up the Pi TFT using the uh, installer script provided by Adafruit. Link in the description, I'm sure. And uh, I just ran that, used it as a frame buffer so that we also get output on uh, the HDMI. And uh, and there you go, it's running. This is like, so this, the Pi TOT acts as a little preview screen. And then um, the whole idea here is that I'd be using a projector or something during like, let's say a music concert, and you just want some background video or um, in an event of some sort, and you want something playing in the background. Uh, you could use this in case there's an issue with the projector or something, you could just preview what's going on. Uh, then plug in HDMI to the projector and you're rocking and rolling. So, the Pi TFT is set in frame buffer copy mode, so it can use both the HDMI and the TFT uh, simultaneous. Uh, one thing you'll notice is the TFT screen, it has a bit of a slower frame rate just because it, just by default, it just can't handle certain frame rates as well because of the communication protocol and so on. Um, so you'll see it's a little choppier in some cases, uh, but it'll actually come out smoother over HDMI, like it prioritizes HDMI. But one thing it doesn't prioritize is the resolution. So we're actually using the resolution of the TFT screen here, which I think is 240 by 320, pretty darn low. It's like 240p, right? In this case, I have some you know old SNES footage running. Uh, and in that case, it kind of works fine because you know the SNES was originally 240p, no big deal. You're just kind of going through the loops. Um, but if you're plugging this into a really high quality projector or a big screen or something like that, you might notice the difference. And I think there's ways around that to get it so that you're using the full HD HDMI resolution uh, and then downscaling to this smaller screen. I just haven't bothered to figure that out yet. Uh, so another cool thing, this comes with some uh, GPIO buttons here, right? Uh, what I've done is I've used the GPIO keys uh, options within the config.txt file. I might link some documentation below to pretty much treat these as keyboard keys. Uh, and luckily, the Pi Video Looper script has a few shortcuts that you can do. So, like for instance, we don't want to watch Donkey Kong Country. I've set the second button to be a skip button. So there you go. It's it's shut that down, and it's going to be loading the next video in just a moment. These are really long videos. These are like you know let's plays of video games. Okay, there you go. I think this is Galaga or something, right? Um, and then this other one I have to uh, play and pause. And then this last one is actually a shutdown button because the, apparently the script had a, a default shortcut to shut down. Anyway, I think this is really cool. I, I like making these projects and making them a, a little bit more uh, final. I, I did add bolts in here just to make it a little bit more secure. I thought the snap fittings would pop off all the time. and It was really annoying. Um, yeah, I just, I think it's pretty cool. Pretty easy project. 
and, uh, you know, fulfilling. And also audio should work too, though in my particular projector, it doesn't. Uh, so if you have any questions how this works, um, or you know you want to try to get one set up yourself, please leave a comment, something like that, and I'd be happy to help you out. Okay, have a great one. Oh, and here's here's the shutdown. Boom, shutting down. Uh, it takes a second for it to like fully turn off.